A new mud smell feature at Yellowstone spews boiling hot dung. The unrest may be due to slight changes in pressure or the amount of water seeping into an underground reservoir system. A newly formed thermal feature has violently burst into life at Yellowstone National Park, forcing park rangers to seal off nearby sections after showering pavements with a mixture of water, soil, and sinter, mineral deposits deposited from hot springs. And in a further sign that the park's hydrothermal system is in action, a geyser that has been dormant for five years is heating up and dumping boiling water into the surroundings. The activity appears to have started on May 24, Michael Poland, a research geophysicist and responsible scientist at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, told Live Science via email. This hydrothermal system is very dynamic, the only constant is change. A geyser is a type of hot spring characterized by a pipe-like opening in the ground that is connected to a reservoir of water below the surface. Molten rock several miles deep in the Earth's crust heats the water to the boiling point, which builds pressure in the chamber and forces the water to rise to the surface. The remaining water begins to evaporate and eventually builds up enough force to send a scorching column of water into the air. A recent burst of activity occurred at Geyser Hill, near the famous Old Faithful Geyser. But after two weeks of chaos, things slowly cooled off. There is still a bit of anxiety in the area, but it has calmed down, Poland said. The feature doesn't pop often. Yellowstone is home to the largest and most densely populated collection of thermal features in the world with more than 10,000 geysers, hot springs, mud pots and steam vents spewing water, mud and gas. Thus, recent activity is not unusual, and Geyser Hill may return to its previous state, Poland said. New features may remain active intermittently, in which case park rangers may have to reroute sidewalks. The increase in temperature and eruptions in the area could have been caused by small changes in pressure. The system is like the plumbing in an old house, says Poland. The pipes are corroded and may contain a lot of mineral deposits, and the slightest change in pressure in the system can cause a leak. Riots can also be caused by more water seeping into the basement. There was a lot of snow at Yellowstone last year, so runoff means there's more water below the surface, Poland noted. All these factors together can affect the behavior of geysers and hot spring systems, and change over time, added Poland. The recent unrest is similar to the period of thermal disturbances that led to catastrophic eruptions in September 2018 including the rare eruption of the Ear Spring Geyser, a human waste dump 80 years out. At the time, a 30-foot, 9-meter jet of hot water sprayed various debris onto the surrounding landscape, such as coins, hats, logs and pacifiers from the 1930s. The hot molten rock beneath Yellowstone National Park is two and a half times larger than previously thought, meaning the park's supervolcano could potentially erupt with a force roughly 2,000 times the size of Mount St. Helens, according to a new study. By measuring seismic waves from earthquakes, scientists were able to map the magma chamber beneath the 88.5-kilometer-long Yellowstone caldera, lead author Jamie Farrell of the University of Utah said Monday. The chamber is 29 kilometers wide and is at a depth of 5 to 14 and a half kilometers beneath the earth, he added. 
That means there was enough volcanic material below the surface to match the largest of the three supervolcano eruptions over the past 2.1 million years, Farrell said. Helens in 1980 in Washington state. A similar one would spew large amounts of volcanic material into the atmosphere, where it would encircle the Earth, he said. This will be a global event, said Farrell. There will be a lot of destruction and a lot of impact around the world. Yellowstone's last eruption occurred 640,000 years ago, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. For years, earthquake swarms beneath Yellowstone had warned that the caldera was too late to erupt. Farrell dismissed that notion, saying there was not enough data to estimate the time of the next eruption. We believe there will be another eruption. We don't know when, he said. There are enough instruments monitoring Yellowstone's seismic activity that scientists are likely to know in advance if unusual activity occurs and magma moves to the surface, Farrell said. The USGS Yellowstone Volcano Observatory lists the park's volcano warning level as normal for December. Yellowstone attracts millions of visitors with its geothermal geysers, hot springs and bubbling mud pots. The park just opened its gates Sunday for its winter season. Park officials did not immediately return calls seeking comment. A major earthquake in Yellowstone is much more likely than a volcanic eruption, Farrell said. The 7.5-magnitude Lake Hebgen earthquake killed 28 people there in 1959. Farrell presented his findings last week to the American Geophysical Union. He said he was submitting it to a scientific journal for peer review and publication. Brigham Young University geology professor Eric Christensen said the study by Farrell and University of Utah professor Bob Smith was critical to understanding the evolution of massive volcanoes like Yellowstone.